Hello everyone and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video and today's video guys I hope you enjoy it because let me tell you I have lost years, literal years of my literal life but all of that will come later. Uh, I want to preface this video by sort of briefly telling you what it's going to be about. I'm building an aeroplane here, very exciting I know, because I wanted to showcase, I wanted to do like a sort of quasi tutorial about how to launch aquatic craft. So you know, boats, uh, seaplanes, um, submarines, I'm kind of like doing a blank now trying to think of things that go in water. Kayaks, I did a kayak in the middle of my second channel. Right anyway, aside from all that, I wanted to make this video because I wanted to kind of give you guys a little tutorial, if you will, about how to better launch aquatic craft. So it's quite popular in this game to build boats, seaplanes, submarines, and uh, what else goes in the water? Oil rigs, things like that. And the way you kind of have to do that in Kerbal Space Program 1 is by putting it on the runway and then driving whatever craft you've built towards the end of the runway, driving it off the end of the runway's tarmac and then down that grassy slope and then into the water and it's a bit janky, it's a bit awkward, it's very easy to break stuff. But did you guys know that there is another launch site and you can see me flying there now, this is how you get to it. There is another launch site very close to the Kerbal Space Center, it takes minutes to get to and if you get near this launch site you unlock it as a launchable destination from the, you know, the launch button in the vehicle assembly building. Uh, in the vehicle assembly building, it can't be done through the space plane hangar. Uh, and then you can launch from here, and this launch site is unique as it comes into view. You'll see the dialogue box pop up, there it is. You found the cove launch site, because it's in this cove, but look! See that launch pad? It is in the water. And there is a ramp that leads from the launch pad into the water. So I feel like the devs knew exactly what they were doing when they came up with this. This is the place you go to, to launch aquatic craft. So basically, just build whatever aquatic craft you want to build in the, um, I feel like the space plane hangar lends itself better to stuff like this. Then just switch the uh, editor to vehicle assembly building, and then select the cove launch site as your launch place. Yes, you still need to add wheels to the craft, but then you just have to roll it down the ramp, so it's fine. And I thought that's going to be a great little tutorial video, a little easter egg showcase, I guess, saying, hey guys, just let you know this is a thing. But I was like, ah, oh, there's only, this is only two minutes of video, and I feel like I should probably do, build some sort of craft just, just to showcase this technique, right? So I thought, hey, um, I'm the guy that's known for SSTOs, right? I make SSTOs, I'm pretty good at making SSTOs. Let's just make a very simple, easy SSTO to low curb in orbit and make it an aquatic one, right? Make it a seaplane SSTO just to like launch it from the water, fly to orbit, and then, you know, deorbit and land back near the cove launch site. What a great little fun, what a fun little easy video. Um, easy not only because it's easy for me to edit and film because I'm doing, I've got an exam in two weeks. I'm doing a prescriber's course and I've, I've got an exam in two weeks. So that's a big stress. I haven't got much time to edit videos at this very moment in my life. And also, you know, it's just a little, it's not really the focus of the video, right? This is just the little showcase of how you can apply the thing that I taught you in the tutorial. So, kind of two birds with one stone. However, um, I vastly, I either vastly underestimated how easy it is to build a SST, um, an aquatic SSTO in Kerbal Space Program, or I massively overestimated how good I was at this game. Um, because it turned out to be one of the most difficult things I've done in my life, ever. And that's not an exaggeration. Okay, maybe it's a bit of an exaggeration, but I'm just saying. I mean, a big thing is probably that it's just I don't have much experience at all of building aquatic SSTOs. I've built my fair share of Lathe aquatic SSTOs, but Lathe is a different beast to Kerbin. Kerbin's gravity is much higher, the atmosphere is thicker, you can't really compare it to Lathe. But uh, let's have a go, see how things go. So you see I've selected the Cove launch site as my launch destination. Let's go, I was facing the wrong way. So make sure you face to the left in the vehicle. This is the tutorial, it carries on, right? People watched the came for the tutorial and clicked off after, they lost out. So yeah, you gotta make sure your craft is facing to the left in the vehicle assembly building. And here we are in the water, and as you can see, um, it wasn't what I had in my mind, okay? <laughs> I thought maybe it will just float on those pontoons, which was a bit uh, misguided. I guess the ultimate flaw with this SSTO is that I don't really know what I'm doing when it comes to building seaplane SSTOs for Kerbin, so I just said, let's just build an SSTO that I think would work 
if it weren't a seaplane, and then instead of adding landing la landing wheels, we'll add some pontoons, and that should work. And as you can see, it did near work. It did near work. Uh, the seas are a bit choppy around Kirby. Now, I don't know if this is due to Scatterer, and if you play in the stock game with no mods, it would work better. But as you can see, the, the plane just sort of hopped, skipped, and jumped its way through the sea and didn't really get anywhere. So, back to the designing phase. <laughs> Because I refuse to play Kerbal Space Program without Scatterer's beautiful ocean. So I consider Scatterer part of stock now for me. <laughs> so let's uh, let's make some changes. And here we have it, the Aquaticus Mark II. I've just, basically it's no different to the Aquaticus Mark I, but it's got bigger pontoons. So this should work better, right? Let's, let's just put this vehicle to the test and uh, let's see what happens. But first, I must interrupt this message to declare that I have new merchandise! Check it out! Are you tired of the Deep Space Kraken destroying your Kerbal creations? Then pick yourself up some dope Deep Space Kraken Slayer apparel. Available right now, and I can guarantee that wearing this while playing Kerbal Space Program 1 or 2 <laughs> will grant you plus 3 resistance to any and all glitches and or Kraken attacks. Seriously, I'm, I'm really proud of how this design came out, so I hope you dig this, and uh, yeah, Click the link in the description if you want to purchase. Anyway, back to your scheduled, back to your scheduled programming. Okay, so this is a good start. We're already higher. We are like out of the water. Well, not really, but we are. It looks like it's floating more than it did in its Mark One iteration. So I'm going to count this as a win so far. Let's fire up those four rapier engines and see if we can get ourselves there. And uh, yeah, I think the footage does the explaining for me, doesn't it? It's just another case of. Flinging around, nose diving, going underwater, not really getting above a surface speed of 20 meters per second. Oh, they got 25. It's 30. Wow. But uh, nowhere near close to a uh, takeoff velocity. And I tried switching the rapiers to closed cycle mode, see if that helped get into the air, but it didn't. So back to the drawing board. Once again, it was. <laughs> So I decided that my problem was that I didn't have enough boosters. So I decided to add a Panther engine to the top of the plane. Uh, this will be clear of the water line. And also the Panther engines are quite good because they've got huge amounts of gimbal range. And if you put them in their wet mode, um, they have a very good thrust as well. So uh, I thought this might give us the oomph we need and the control we need to get ourselves airborne. And then I switched the pontoons back to a smaller size as well, because I thought maybe it wasn't really the pontoons that were the issue, it was the engines and the boosters. Let's try this design out. And as you can see, we once again made no progress. <laughs> We're still just, you know, slamming up and down, not really going anywhere fast. So back to the design phase once again. Here we can see the Aquaticus Mark IV. We've gone back to bigger pontoons, this time using the Mark II fuselage pieces. These are drained of fuel, by the way, so the thing's not too heavy. And this is floating. This is probably the best one so far, I think. I think you'll agree. Hopefully you'll agree. Let's give this one a go, see if we get any further. There go the rapier engines there. Yeah, no, no, no dice, no dice. As you can see, the thing is like flipping left and right and those peripherally mounted engines on the wingtips are like dragging the water and causing this thing to come to a big, big, a big stop, basically. And so on to the Mark, I've already lost count, this is the Mark V. Whatever, we have the Mark V, largely similar to the previous generation, but as you can see, we have pontoons underneath the side rapier engines as well. So maybe this will be more stable. It's already a little bit wobbly in the water, but let's just uh, let's just give it a go. See how things um, see how things go. So yeah, it was a promising start, but once again the same issue reared its ugly head, and that this thing just couldn't get up to speed without just flipping out of control in the water. So back to the vehicle assembly building we went. This time going for longer pontoons to try and keep this thing stable, and of course adding more boosters with pontoons underneath them. Let's see if this vehicle works. And hey, I think this is looking this is looking pretty good. Not only is it looking like it's floating more stably, but also it's pointing slightly nose upward, giving it a bit more kind of kickoff to get it out of the water and into the air. Let's see how this flight goes. Probably shouldn't use the word flight because didn't fly. <laughs> it's just a same thing once again. So I was getting I was getting quite stressed at this point. <laughs> Because my epic plan of having a nice easy video to make in this period in my life where I'm doing lots of work and lots of curricular activity, I, I need to be able to do something a bit easy. So uh, let's just add more boosters, more boosters and more, let's just see if this works. 
So yeah, I replaced two of the rapiers with four panther engines to get ourselves like enough thrust just to get out of the water. And again, still, still no dice. Still no dice. So, ah, it had been a long time at this point. <laughs> like, I know for you guys it's like under 10 minutes, but it was a long time for me. I thought maybe this SSTO design is just fundamentally flawed. Let's just go back to the drawing board. Instead of just building a normal LKO SSTO and trying to put a hull underneath it, I'll try and build a flying boat. A, a plane that's built like a boat, but that's it actually. So I, I kind of built it with a aquatic design in mind from the get-go. This is me building it here, just to give you an idea of kind of what I was going for. So I've gone with the uh, the Mark III cargo bay ramp as the front, because that looks like the front of a boat. That's about as far as I went with it, to be honest, guys. But I feel like, you know, logically, this thing should fly. I'm not going to show you the entire build time lapse, right? Let's just crossfade to the launch, see how things uh, see how things go. So as an initial start, I'd say this is looking pretty good, right? You know, the uh, it's floating. That's about it. I don't really know what I'm looking for. <laughs> I don't really know what you're supposed to try to aim for when it comes to aquatic SSTs. But this thing looks like it should be... Like the engines are out of the water, or most of the engines are out of the water, and it's pointing at a slightly upward angle of attack to help it clear that waterline more easily. Uh, let's just throttle up the engines. See, I'm just going to time-lapse the footage here so you can see how long I kind of persisted with this potential takeoff. But yeah, I built, as it turns out, trying to build a flying boat for me... I ended up just building a boat, and not a very good one at that. It didn't fly, and it was not, didn't work. So, back to the drawing board once again. I thought, well, let's just go back to the Aquaticus, because of the whole, I think this is more of a sunk cost fallacy at this point. I was like, I've invested so much time into this thing that was not meant to take too much time. Let's just, uh, let's just try and continue working on this thing, see if I can get it to do something. So, I thought, let's just put some engines on a swivel at the front. So they can just point downwards to get it clear of the waterline, then they can rotate into a horizontal position to assist in the actual forward flight. Now I thought that was pretty sound logic, right? But let's see how that played out. It, uh, yeah, you, you can see how it's played out. It hasn't played out uh, <laughs> at all, really. I feel like duct tape would have been a more secure attachment than whatever those rotation servos are made of. So yeah, that, that idea had to die very quickly. So then I thought, right. What, 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 what is it that I need to do? What do I do here? <laughs> so I decided to just try and keep things as simple as possible and just stuck a big dumb engine on the underside of the craft, pointed at a fixed position, and it's a panther engine because they've got decent thrust, they're lighter than the rapiers, and they got um good thrust vectoring as well, which I guess would, I need all the help I can get at this point. But uh, crossfading to the outcome of this particular iteration, yeah, the thing was just nose diving over and over, and I ended up just crashing into this uh, sandy shore on the other side of the cove. But I felt like I was onto something. I felt like this is going to be... Look, it, 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 it floats, right? We are above the waterline. I feel like if we just extend those bottom pontoons forward a little bit, that should be the final thing we need in order to get ourselves airborne. And at this point, I just wanted to get airborne, right? Like, I wasn't even thinking about getting into space at this point. I just wanted to get into the air. That would be an absolute win at this point. It was getting late. Okay, and um, I just had to get something in the air in this Kerbal Space Program video. A game about going to space, and a game that I pretend to be good at sometimes. So it was imperative that I at least get into the air. And then with this iteration, it wasn't going too well, right? But then, this happened. Playing at a real-time speed now, so you could just bask in the glory that was... I flipped... And then I just put the rapiers on closed cycle mode, and then I quickly shut down the panther engine, and we did this, like, forward roll, and guys, I'm counting this as a win. I'm counting this as a takeoff. I didn't disclose this early. You guys thought I was just trying to pitch up when I was trying to take off. Why would you guys think that? This was my plan this entire time. It was to pick up speed, nose down, cause the whole plane to flip out of control, but not actually out of control. It was a controlled out of control maneuver to induce a roll so we could get ourselves airborne. And I did it. I did this was what I was trying to do this entire time. And we did it. I was so happy. Uh, but also I was concentrating so hard to make sure I didn't then slam into the side of the land and, uh, you know, <laughs> undo all of my hard progress. And Jebediah and Bill Kerman there looking at each other thinking, I can't believe that worked. Neither can I, guys. 
Neither can I. Now we have so many boosters with so many engines on this space plane because I was so desperate to get it to be able to easily leave the water that once you're in the air it's actually really really flies really really well right it has amazing thrust to weight ratio we can just pitch up to a very aggressive angle of attack pretty much straight away and uh, get ourselves I like to just try and get ourselves up to 10 kilometers then once we get to that point try and fly nice and flat because this is a good point in the ascent where the atmosphere is nice and thin so there's minimal drag uh, but also there is enough oxygen still present in the air to supply the engines with you know oxygen so they can burn <laughs> I'm going a bit. I'm still. I've just. I'm, I'm recording this commentary as soon as I finished this whole filming this video. So I'm a little bit loopy, a little bit um, coming down from the euphoria. Going to just time lapse the footage now because uh, yeah, my happiness, my joy uh, was premature because while it's all working so far, we are still you know fairly low in the atmosphere. There's lots of air resistance to allow those. I don't say air resistance, but there's lots of air for those wings and elevons to uh, help control the craft. But once we get into the thin parts of the atmosphere, as you can see, this thing doesn't control well at all because I forgot. I just designed a normal SSTO and then slapped a giant hull on the bottom, forgetting that that hull will have mass and the nuclear engines, they don't have thrust vectoring. So we're kind of stuck, whenever I fire the engine, and the, 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 the rapier engines have thrust vectoring and even when they're firing, it just induces the craft into a forward roll. It's impossible to control. I couldn't control it in space at all. It was a disaster. Here you can see me just like rolling desperately on the nav ball, burning whenever I'm pointing vaguely radially out. And as you can see, well, take a look at that apoapsis marker. That is, that is above 70 kilometers. That's space. Okay, so I am chalking this as another win. This is what I was planning on doing this entire time, guys. I promise. I swear. This is my plan this entire time. It's above 70 kilometers. It's in space. It's a space plane. I never said SSTO in the title and thumbnail, I hope. So you can't say that I clickbaited you. This is in space. Okay. Look, Jebediah Kerman is on EVA and he's done an EVA report and it's saying that he is in space near to Kerbin. So there you are. I did it. I set out to achieve what I wanted to achieve, which is to do a tutorial on how to get to the Cove launch site, and then also do a little bonus seaplane SSTO, not SSTO, sorry, not SSTO, sorry, single stage to space. So SSTS. But then I faced a new problem. I wanted to be able to land this thing in water, right? Because I'm not convinced the landing gear I put on this thing is going to be able to stand up to a land landing because it's the weakest landing gear. And this is a very heavy SSTO. Uh, but also I'm not in orbit. So I can't like do any burns or anything to like determine where I'm going to land. So this is a bit of a risky re-entry right here. So I just know that to the um, east of the Kerbal Space Center, which is where I took off from, like I, I went in an eastbound trajectory, there is a massive landmass. So I thought, let's just re-enter pointing radially in to see if we can do as much error breaking as possible so we can end up landing in the, uh, the ocean. And as you can see, that did not work at all. We are now coming in hard and fast over a mountain range. So I was like, well, this is a disaster. I wanted to be able to land and take off from the water. And I don't think this thing could even land on land safely. So, oh, despite all of my efforts, it's all gone to disaster. And as you can see, this thing is horribly unstable. I need to be burning the rapier engines constantly in order to maintain level flight. So I've got no ocean platform to land on. I can't steer this thing towards the ground safely. And I don't think it can even land on the ground with the wheels. But then I saw this. You see it? I saw a little puddle of water and I was like you know what I'm gonna aim for that we're gonna go aim for this little spot of water and see if I can land on that and then we can truly say that I went from the water to space to water again and I didn't need the landing gear but it was very tense let's see if I can pull this landing off the footage is now down to real time speed here we go guys let's see oh I think, I think you will find that that counts. Nothing has exploded. The Kerbals are safe and sound in the water, in the puddle. And yes, we've done it. There's the time lapse now to daytime. And yes, I did it. We did it. We, I, I, I'm so happy that I managed to do this. And uh, 
Well, there it is. Circling round, <laughs> we've landed in the water. So I guess in conclusion, guys, thank you for watching this tutorial on how to unlock the Cove launch site and also watching my suffering. Uh, thank you especially to the names on screen, my patrons, and if you and my channel members. Shouldn't forget those guys. All of you guys are the best. Don't forget to buy my merch from the link in the description. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next in the next video. My goodness. <laughs>